I want to do some examples for you of calculating the Lie algebra of a Lie group. And I'm going to start with the example of ON, the group of n by n orthogonal matrices. So first of all, what does orthogonal mean? It means the matrices A such that A transpose A equals the identity. Now, geometrically, what this means is A preserves dot products between vectors um, because you know a dot product between V and W is the same as V transpose W. So if you take the dot product between AV and AW, that's AV transpose AW, which is the same as V transpose A transpose AW. And that, if you want that to be equal to V transpose W for all V and W, you need A transpose A to be the identity. So if you preserve dot products between vectors, you preserve their lengths, you preserve angles between them. So these orthogonal matrices are things like rotations and reflections. So the Lie algebra in this case, I'm going to write as little o n. This is the set of matrices x such that x tx is orthogonal in big O n for all t in R. So what does that mean? That means x tx all transposed times x tx equals the identity for all t. How do we deal with this expression, sort of exp of something all transposed? Well, if you think about the power series definition of exp, if you take the transpose of a sum, you might as well just take the transpose of every term and sum them. And similarly, if you raise a matrix to a power, and then transpose, you might as well transpose and then raise to a power, just because AB all transposed is B transpose A transpose. So in other words, we can just take the transpose inside and we get X T X transpose, where the transpose is now just hitting the X, times X T X equals the identity. In other words, that's saying X tx transpose is the inverse of x tx and we've already seen that uh, x tx inverse equals x minus tx so what we get is x tx transpose equals x minus tx for all t And this is this is equivalent to um, this is if and only if x is in the Lie algebra little on. So a first guess would be we want x transpose to be minus x. So if x transpose equals minus x, then certainly this equation follows. So x t x transpose is x minus tx. So in that case, x would be in the Lie algebra. So any anti-symmetric matrix, anything where if we transpose it, we get minus it, any such matrix is in the Lie algebra of the orthogonal group. It turns out that's everything. So um, how do we see that x tx transpose equals x minus tx? Well, surely you can just take logs, you say. Surely you can just take log of each side and that sends the x away. Well, in some sense you're right, but of course log is only defined near to the identity element. So we need to first of all put ourselves near to the identity element before we can take logs. And the way we do that is we take t to be very small. So if t is very small, then uh, tx transpose and minus tx are near to the identity. Uh, sorry, near to the zero matrix. Near to the zero matrix. This is near in the sense of the matrix norm. Um, if you, you know, you could you could say all the absolute values of all the entries are small. 
So if t is very small, then tx transpose and minus tx are near to the zero matrix. So um, exp tx transpose and exp minus tx are near to the identity. So using the local logarithm, we can cancel the x on either side because if we're sufficiently close to the identity, we have this inverse for the exponential map. So taking logs, we get minus tx equals tx transpose, and then we can divide by t if t is not zero. So this is why we're requiring um, in the definition of the Lie algebra, x tx is in on for all t, because we want to be able to rescale to put ourselves near to the uh, near to the identity or near to the zero matrix, depending on whether we're in the group or the algebra. Okay, so this tells us that on little on the Lie algebra is the set of matrices x such that x transpose is minus x. In other words, it's the anti-symmetric matrices. Just to remind you, we already saw an example of this um, when we took exp of zero minus theta theta zero. That's an anti-symmetric matrix. This is our x. Its transpose is minus x. And this was, remember, cos theta minus sine theta sine theta cos theta. So that is a rotation, a two-dimensional rotation. So that's in the group O2. Another way of getting this final implication, if you don't like taking logarithms, and arguably this is a better way of doing it, is to differentiate this condition that x t x transpose times x t x equals the identity matrix. If you differentiate that with respect to t, well, the identity matrix is constant, so when you differentiate, you get zero. On the other side, you can differentiate with uh, the product rule. So d by dt x minus t x transpose. Oh, sorry, that's not minus, is it? I'm getting ahead of myself. That's just x t x transpose times x t x equals, well, if I differentiate x t x transpose, I bring down an x transpose. We proved that in the second video or something. So I get x transpose x t x transpose times x t x. And then I leave the first term alone, I differentiate the second, so I get x t x transpose times x x t x. Okay, and now this is true for all t, remember. So again, this for all t is really important because now it's, it's true for t equals zero. And if I set t equal to zero, x of zero is just the identity, x of zero is just the identity. So all I get is zero equals x transpose plus x which tells us x transpose equals minus x. That's another way of getting that if x tx is orthogonal for all t, then x has to be anti-symmetric. So the Lie algebra of the group of orthogonal matrices is the set of anti-symmetric matrices. Just a couple of comments. First of all, on, the orthogonal group, is topologically closed. Right, this was the set of uh, groups we were interested in. Those are the topologically closed. How do I see this? Well, consider the map F uh, from all matrices, GLN R, to all matrices that sends A to A transpose A. So what is the orthogonal group? The orthogonal group is the pre-image of the identity matrix under this map. In other words, it's the set of matrices A that map to the identity, by definition. 
Um, so first thing to notice, this map is continuous because the matrix entries of A transpose A are just polynomials in the matrix entries of A and polynomials are continuous functions. So if AK is a sequence of orthogonal matrices, um, then you know FAK is always equal to the identity, which means that the limit as K goes to infinity of FAK is also the identity. Now, if f is a continuous function, this limit is the same as f of the limit of a k, assuming this limit exists. Right? Remember, topologically closed means if you have a sequence of matrices in O n, and that sequence of matrices converges to something, then it converges to an orthogonal matrix. And that's what we're saying here. If it converges to something, then whatever it converges to, this lim a k, when I apply f of that, I get the identity, which means that this limit satisfies A transpose A is the identity. So it is a topologically closed subgroup. And basically, if ever your group is cut out by a nice equation like this, A transpose A equals the identity, um, then you're going to get a topologically closed group. Second comment, um, I said that the Lie algebra should be closed undertaking brackets. So in other words, if X and Y are in little o n, then x bracket y, that is x y minus y x, should also be in the in the little o n. And that is true, and I'm going to leave it as an exercise for you to prove that.